important, the employee or the customer? That's a question that I was recently asked on social media, so I figured I'll take a stab at it. Hi, my name is Juanita Coley. I am the CEO and founder of Solid Rock Consulting, and today we are talking about who's more important. Is there an entity that is more important in the customer and employee dynamic? Well, if you follow me online, you already know that I'm always talking about, I have a spicy saying, okay? So if you're sensitive, exit chat left, right? I have a spicy saying that says, without an employee experience strategy, your CX strategy is trash. So without an EX strategy, employee experience, your CX strategy, customer experience strategy is trash. Why is that? That is because an employee is never going to treat a customer better than they are being treated. Now, when I say that, I always get some slack, right? Because people are like, well, just because you have a great employee experience doesn't necessarily guarantee that they're going to treat the customer amazing. But what you can guarantee that if you don't have a customer experience strategy, that they are definitely not going to treat the customer well. Why? Not because necessarily they don't want to, but in many cases they can't. What do you mean? Well, the reason people oftentimes get this confused um, or misunderstand what I'm saying is because they associate uh, employee experience with pizza parties. They associate employee experience with making the employee happy. And that is not what employee experience is all about. Employee experience to truly um, start to develop an employee experience culture and program or strategy, you really need three elements. And those three elements are equipping. You need to make sure that people are equipped. They are skilled. They have the skill set needed to thrive in your environment. And so if I am helping customers, do I have the skill set to help this customer? If I don't have the skill set, then what I, am I not going to be able to do? I am not going to be able to help the customer. Hence, if you don't have an employee experience strategy, your customer experience is going to be trash. We've all experienced this before where we've called into a business, we've walked into a retail store, we went to get service done, and the person who was helping us was maybe their first day on the job or for whatever reason, maybe information had changed and they didn't have that information. And so they did not have the skill required to help us get the necessary resolve that we needed in that for that problem in that situation. So the very first thing that we really want to take a look at when we're thinking about in building out an employee experience strategy is equipping. Do we equip our employees or do we have a process in by which we skill our employees? Okay. That's one in employee experience strategy. Two, another variable is empowering. Okay. So people use this word interchangeably, equipping, empowering, empowering, equipping, and they are not the same. Okay. Equipping is about skilling, whereas empowering, look at that latter half of the word, power is about authority to act on the skill. Okay. The power to act on the skill in which I now have. I can have the skill set, but not have the authority to do anything about it. And so that is super critical when we are thinking about um, uh, making sure that we are building a strong employee experience uh, culture. And then last but not least is engagement. OK, what am I being measured on and how do I uh, monitor what I'm being measured on? Because what I don't uh, manage, I can't measure or what I don't measure, I can't manage. OK, and so first I need to know what I'm being measured on. What does success look like for me in this role? OK, so tell me what I'm being measured on. OK, and then what is the cadence in which that is monitored? How do you engage me there? How do you get me coaching? How do you make sure I'm engaged and I'm understanding what my stats and what I am doing so that I have control on my over my performance? Those three elements alone. OK, those three elements alone are very critical. OK, when we're thinking about building out an employee experience strategy. And so I want to talk about that first.
Okay. Hey, hey, hey there. It's Juanita Coley here. And I want to personally invite you to book a WFM discovery call where we will talk through what your CX customer experience and your EX employee experience goals are for your organization and how you can obtain them by leveraging the WFM discipline. Yes, that's right. Workforce management and operations can work hand in hand together. And I want to talk to you about your goals. How can you have culture and have it efficiently? How can you achieve customer experience without sacrificing on employee experience? That's what we're gonna be talking about. So click the link, schedule your call at wfmbuildingbridges.com and I am excited to dive deep with you. See you soon. Okay, so in the question that I was asked around what's more important, the employee or the customer, I think it is key to understand that the employee is very critical to serving the customer. Okay. So if you don't have an employee experience strategy, your customer experience strategy is going to be trash. Okay. Which means then you're not going to have a customer because those customers are going to seek help or service from your competitor. Okay. So that's first. But then when we think about the customer dynamic, if you don't have customers, guess what? You don't have employees. And so when we think about this dynamic of who's more important, the customer or the employee, this is a question around supply and demand. If there is not a need, there is not a, which means there's no customer. If there's not a need, there's no customer. If there is not a need, meaning customers, if customers aren't frequenting your business because they have no need, then you don't have an employee. And if you don't have enough supply, meaning you don't have something to supply that customer with where many times it is the resource, the employee that is creating that supply, then you don't have a customer. So they both serve their cyclical and they serve each other. And I was having this conversation with someone and I was saying, hey, what in this dynamic, when we think about Say, for example, you are uh, suffering with this major illness and there was someone who could solve that illness for you. They could treat you. Okay, there were there was one person who could rid you of this illness. In this case, who's more important? Is it the person with the illness? who has the need, or is it the person who can serve that need? Who is more important, right? You would, that person with that illness would trade hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars to get rid of this illness, to get rid of this life-threatening illness. And so in this dynamic, when we ask this question around who's more important, the customer or the employee, I think the real question is how do we elevate both of them? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to serve, right, and solve a problem. And so we're trying to serve our customer base But we also have to take in consideration the people who are serving that customer base. And so that's my answer to the question. Uh, The answer is, I don't believe that there is a, a more important component in this scenario. The person who is ill, don't they deserve treatment if there is someone who can treat them? And the person who can treat them Aren't they highly valuable, especially if they're the only one that can treat this individual? And so when we think about business and we think about the reason businesses exist in the first place is to solve for a very specific pain point. We put products and services out into the market because we're wanting to solve someone's pain. We're wanting to solve another company's pain if you're B2B. If you're B2C and your business to consumer, you're wanting to solve a consumer's pain and problem. So how we go about solving that many times require people and resources. And even if we are 
you know, in today's society where we're leveraging a lot of AI, right? Even if we're leveraging AI, that is still a resource. And so still the question is who's more important, AI or is it the customer, right? So it is more so about the problem that we're wanting to solve and making sure that we are equipping both the customer and the employee with what they need to uh, best serve or be served in this instance. And so that's my answer to the question. I know it was long, uh, but I wanted to give you my thoughts on that because it was something that I was asked. So you already know what to do. Leave me a comment, leave me a note. If there's another topic that you want to cover, you already know what to do. Drop it in the comments or DM me. I can't wait to see you back here on another WFM Tipsy Thursdays. And someone is asking, how is this a Tipsy Thursday? Because without our employees, okay, serving our customers, which is our workforce, then we don't have a customer. So it's so, so important that we understand the dynamics of where our customer is, how many people we need to serve or how, where we need to be so that we can be effective in our forecasting and in our scheduling. That's how it is a tips. All right, then until next time, go be great and let's make impact. See y'all soon.